What's happening guys? It's Captain Mario. This here guys is what we call a fiddler crab farm. Now that, my friends, is precision. <laughs> Perfect. Ball in the hole. <laughs> Perfect, man. And there it is. All right, so now that the holes are cut, this, uh, this paint, is a sealant type paint this it's a polyurethane type paint it's real good for stuff like this it makes this box rather waterproof on the inside because we will have you know brackish water you know being carried in and out of there and wetting the sand and things like that with with the brackish water we don't want this thing to this is expensive pine and um to make the box it's super light this box so anyway so the paint the point is is that even where he did the cutouts you know he painted in there. There's about two or three coats around the um, around the edges where he cut. We don't want water getting in this pine farm. This one's custom built to the specs I needed for my room that I put mine in. I have an office outside my main shop that's uh, somewhat climate controlled. No insulation in that room, but we have heat and air in there. But um, this is what you need. We're uh, you hear me saying the video many times. We're, we're we're tired of using coolers. You know, using a 150 quart cooler, whatever. That's a pain. So, effectively, this is this is five foot long and 18 inches deep, 18 inches wide. So that gets us to where we can, you know, instead of 150 quarts, we got closer to 500. And uh, it looks like we're building a pine box for somebody, but it ain't. We just ain't gonna tell them where we're gonna dig the hole. That's, that's, all. All. <laughs> that's right. You can seal them up in this baby. All right, by myself. Everybody's gone today, but got it, got it up in here. Got two bags of sand in it. Um, it's gonna definitely take five or six bags. So I've got that. That's full of fiddlers. That one's full of fiddlers. And there's two more of these in the house full of fiddlers. So we'll, um, we'll see what happens here. But the size is good. Fits where I wanted it good. And um, yeah, so I'll continue on. Hello. Water balls will be here. Sand will be here. Up the hill from the water balls. It's be a beach down to where the water balls go in. All right, let's get with it. Water balls going in. Look at that. Bam! How about that? Those things are about four and a half inches deep. So maybe every two days I'll change out that water source. And uh, that'll be good enough for them. As we're saying now, two bags in, 50 pounds deep. We got this is 150 pounds of sand going in. This is just uh, this is just playground sand. That's all this is. Of course, I'm gonna do this the hardest way possible. Let's tear a tiny, let's tear the tiniest hole that we can tear in it, and see how long it takes 50 pounds of sand to come out. Yay! Okay. There's 150 pounds total there. It's nice and moist too. That's good. 
since we want to give them a little bit of runway, you know, a little bit of heel, they're going to drag sand down in these bowls. It's just the way it is. And they're going to fix this place up just like they want it. So there's that too. But we thought about building a ridge up around the water bowls, but we just don't want them to have too much hard of a time climbing in and out of these water bowls. We can't have that. They got to be able to get in and out. There's no problems. All right, what's next? It's about time for some crabs, honestly. Got 150 pounds of sand. I'm really going to really probably need to wait and see what they're going to do on this end because they're going to fix, like I said, they'll fix this whole thing up like, like they like it. So if we get the sand too awful deep, it'll be hard to get crabs out. We definitely want to give them what they want here, but like I said, they'll, they'll fix all this up like they want it. Another good thing about these water bowls is that when you're, when you're ready to go fishing, you know there'll be water in those, you can bet between the two of them there'll be 100, 150 crabs in those. They're pretty big bowls, contrary to what it looks like on camera. So that being said, that allows us to grab it right up and dump what fiddlers we need into a bucket and go fishing with. Let's dump some crabs in here and see what happens. We're gonna dump about 500 in, see what happens. And I'm sure they're going to just love it. Go check it out, boys and girls. Check it out. Look at all the room we got now. Let's find out what's dead and what's not. This is coming out of a bin with a, with a couple thousand in it. We'll do them a little bit at a time. They're fighting right now. A lot of them are stuck together. Got a couple dead ones. They're going, if they don't start digging right down right away, you can see these here. It's hard to see, but right in here, these are they're digging straight down. That's what we want. That's helping the crabs doing that. They don't know what to think. They're all of a sudden got all kinds of room to, for activities. Another couple hundred. We'll spread them out and let them start rolling around. They're fighting like crazy. You put them on top of each other, they'll fight. All right, we're gonna put, put a few more in here with the trusty jug. Put a few hundred more. Figure about, um, figure around 120, 130 crabs per pint. It's about what it comes up with. So this thing's about four pints. Um, so it's about half full. So there's, there's two or 300 crabs going in every time we do this. They're digging down quick into the sand. So we got a few dead ones. Oh, he was playing possum. We do really get a few dead ones. I want to get all those out if we can right now. Those are the weak ones. They're not going to survive. If you need any holders, crabs that will not let go of the other crabs, they're gone too. We don't want damage done to them before it's even time to get this thing even going good. We don't want to, we don't want to have dead ones and and all that happening. Yeah, all these are, yeah, there's a lot of them are digging in. That's perfect. Okay, so we're, we probably got, in a couple of these I dumped, you guys didn't see, but we probably had a thousand now. Um, everybody that's in here right now looks pretty good. We got them fighting right here. That's how you break them up. Oh, yeah, he's a mean one. I promise you. Let's see if he killed this one. Yep, he killed that one. Cause that one to get killed. See, that's when they pinch each other, that's what happens. Not 
about 150 or so right there. Get moving now. Break it up. Break it up, people. Break it up. Break it up. They're fighting like crazy. That one's injured, I think. You gotta really watch them because, yeah, we don't want no, we just don't want any dead ones. If you get two that are tangled up, they're probably not gonna make it. If they're tangled up tight, won't come loose. We don't want that either. So now that we're at about a thousand in here, um, definitely need to go tap into the water source and, and, and get that, get those bowls with some brackish water in those. That's the that's the next step. And um, just gonna kind of pick through here and see what's see what's happening. They all look they look really good for being stored in the tight container I had them in. I didn't want them in there 24 hours, so got four thousand yesterday. You know, you know it's a lot of crabs to take care of. When you get around 1,500 or so, it gets pretty easy. Look at this amount of crabs. We got 1,200 in here probably now. Maybe 1,300. That gets pretty easy to take care of. Uh, the dead ones are pretty easy to spot. Ones that aren't doing well, they're easy to spot. Um, yeah, so all these are, looks like we're pretty good right now. I'm going to go with a smaller container now. Out of my kitchen in here. We're going to be dumping them around 100. This is around 100 fiddlers. Every time we make a dump here, it's going to be around 100. You want to spread them out. You don't want to beat on them, just want to spread them out. See who's dead and who's going to dig and who's, who's weak. Um, really, honestly, like I said, you don't even want weak ones in here. If they look, you know, if they look pretty bad. Now you can tell, drop them on their back. If you drop them on their back, you get it here where you can see it. If you drop them on their back, and they don't turn themselves back over. See how you flip back over? I don't know how good you can guys can see that, but if you drop them on their back, see how he's laying there? See if he flips back over. See, he's pretty weak. Yeah, see, he won't even turn himself back over, so he's probably not going to make it. Whatever's happened to him, poor little guy, whatever's going on with him, um, he's probably not going to make the cut. And that's really how you tell, just drop them on their back. Like you said. All right, another 100 or so. Between what you've seen and not seen, we're getting up to about 1,600 fiddlers in here. And with the um, with the bowls down on this end, with these they're falling into the falling into the water bowls. So we want to get this. We'll probably have to set some hardware cloth in here, make a little ramp for them to be able to climb, you know, in and out of these water bowls. So I, we figured by the cordage and the size of this thing, we're around four hundred and something quarts here with this with this farm that we built. So. Steve Hammock is a local finish carpenter. He built this, this box specifically for this reason. And um, with that cordage and amount of sand we can put in here, we're probably good to about 22 to 2,400 crabs, knowing from 15 years of how they act and what they do and, um, and, and that kind of thing. We know from, from keeping them in separate 150 to 200 quart coolers you know, forever and ever. We needed a big box. I'd like to make it twice the size, but obviously I, I just don't have the room for it. I mean, I do, but I don't want to go overboard until we know exactly everything's going to do here for us. So we'll start building some habitat here. The next thing I want, I want to show you guys, um, the, you know, these floral blocks, there's wet and dry foam. You want to get just if this is wet foam, wet or dry foam. And what this will do is it'll soak up the uh, the brackish water. You can pour the, the brackish water directly on it, and they'll they'll come to these blocks for moisture. And we've seen them also where they'll eat it. They'll eat the whole bottom off of it that's laying in the sand. So they're just floral blocks. Get them on Amazon wherever you want to get them. About 12 14 bucks for a you know 
a six or eight pack of them. So I'll show you how we, what I do with these. Everything's dry right now. No water's been added yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this up though. So I'm gonna give them one down by the water bowls and then I put a half one there. And then we're gonna take a whole one and I like to set it up on one of the sides like this. When we pour water, it'll soak right into it. We'll pour, this is the kind you can, you know, it's kind of satisfying to mash it, you know, and tear it up. See how the little fingerprints been? But it'll, it'll hold, like I said, it'll soak that, it'll soak that brackish water right up. So get some of those floor blocks that can be wet. If you get the dry, um, it's going to just deflect the water and it's not going to work like you want it to. Okay, and I've also got a, yeah, I've got a little thing for them to climb on. They're toys, you see. You gotta have this kind of stuff for them. They, 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 they really like this kind of stuff. It's, you know, it's funny to get Fiddler Crafts some toys, but they, they really like this. So check this thing out. This is from, you know, the pet store, and it's an amphibian thing. It goes in the corner. So y'all get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of this corner for a minute, boys, and girls. And we're gonna put this in here. Boy, they're dead. They're out, man, there's so many crabs in here. They've already dug down to the bottom of this thing that quick. They are good, good diggers. Y'all get out of there. We'll put that right there. They're all under this dirt, man. They're they're just they're literally everywhere. Now see if you if you fill these containers up, if you fill these containers up with fresh water, you'd have a huge problem. Thus the crowds would suffocate. If you were to make brackish water, you'd take, you know, about two gallons and you put about a quarter cup of salt in it. But I'd rather use water straight from the river instead of trying to mimic it with Morton salt or sea salt. So they have to have that to live. They'll they'll die. Don't pour fresh water in here anywhere. So, um, yeah, they'll suffocate. What happens is, if you look at one of these crabs, it's hard to see because it's sandy, but their gills are actually right next to their legs underneath here. And this is how they breathe. So if they can't get in water that's satisfactory and clean off themselves, and they know to do it too, they, they can't breathe well. Then they'll go burrow back up and get sandy again. But that's how they breathe. So whatever's in here can't be contaminated because they breathe on where they crawl. This, their little belly's on the ground all the time. So it's important that they keep this clean under here. And that's what these bones are for. And if you look right here, they're already starting to climb on the block. They really like it. Um, and they will actually, like I said, they'll actually eat this stuff. Whatever's in these foam, foam, foam blocks, they'll eat it. And then we'll get them on an all organic diet to get them to quit stinking. They're already clean, but they'll, they'll quit stinking if you start feeding them an organic diet, like dry blood worms and grits. And uh, these floral blocks work real well for them to eat on and for moisture. If they don't keep themselves clean with moisture, they will die again. You got to keep their gills clean on their bellies. Okay, and I'll give you, you guys an example of the wet foam right here. Watch when I submerge it in this brackish water. Watch what, watch what happens. See it soaking up that? It's sucking up the brackish water in through the block. You can actually hear it. And then once this is pretty soaked, we'll put it in the farm. I've decided to put two and a half in it. Look at that. That's why you got to get wet foam because regular styrofoam blocks, dry foam is called Dry, dry floral foam will not will not soak that water up at all. This is open cell foam compared to closed cell foam. That's pretty heavy now, so I'm gonna take it and introduce it. They're really they're really pissed right now, but I'm gonna put it down here all up on top of them because they're they tend to go to this end in, the, in these type in these in this environment because we always come in from the other end so they run from us 
and come to this end. So we're going to put it, I don't want to smush anybody. So we're just going to lay it right there. And in just in a little bit, when I get out of the way, those things will be covered with crabs. You see that little environment I put right there about 10 minutes ago. There's probably 300 crabs around it and under it and digging under it. They just, they like stuff like that. So you want to give them little things that they look at it. Here they go. They already know. They know that's a source of moisture. See them climbing up the side of it. Even with me standing here. They know that there's moisture there. They know. See, and in our water bins, we've got, got a rock in there so they can climb out. I decided not to use hardware cloth there because I didn't feel like cutting it right now, actually. So there's two granite rocks that were perfect, so just stick those in there. No, too bad that won't help filter the water. It may a little bit, but I doubt it. So we'll change the water every day. And to keep leak through onto the floor, not that it matters. This is an old, this is an old garage, basically. But... I got catch bins under there to catch the water as it gets nastier, you know. We'll have to change it out, obviously, every day or two. Two days, probably. But they're digging it. So, now we got around 2,000 in here. These full blocks are, are important. Um, because if that water, you know, it starts getting contaminated or whatever, they know. They'll, they'll get out of that and they'll go to the, to the floral blocks. And uh, they'll just start sucking on those. They got to stay moist, man, or gills stay dirty. I mean, that's, that's, that'll kill them. That and cold is what kills the crabs. Learn more and more and more about this stuff. And then I've got this inserted here. I've got it dug just down into the, into the sand. That'll be a good catch bin to grab you two or 300. We usually take two to 300 when we go fishing with two people. And uh, that'll, that'll work good for that. As soon as I'm away from here, that'll start filling up with crabs because they'll hide in it. They'll think it's a you know place to go. So they're they're all over the backside of this pond. Look at them. They love it. Okay, it's about time to quit to leave them alone for a while. I do want to add a few more because I've got I've got just crabs everywhere. It's just we got really too many. I want to sell a few of these maybe and. And move the move these around and clean these uh clean these containers out a little bit. But these these crabs here are pretty clean in this red one. The ones in the in the 180 quart cooler, they, they need to be cleaned up a little bit. But what I was gonna show you is it's time to put the heat on these and leave them alone. What we got here up inside that lamp fixture is a ceramic heat bulb. And it's it it won't it, it won't burn them up. We found that the, the chicken bulbs, um the you know, the red glowing bulbs for for chicks it works real well but it really dries the sand out and um if that happens and they don't get out of that quick enough it's just it, it just dries them out and it'll kill them so um we use a ceramic heat bulb and i have a couple of these so if it's really cold you know this this room is pretty you know it's not it's not insulated but it is a room and it is in, completely enclosed we don't have to worry about direct exposure from from cold which is what kills them that heat lamp is usually enough, just one. They, they put out a pretty good amount of heat. I mean, they're for amphibians and whatever else, reptiles, lizards, whatever. They do a good job, though. They will they don't they won't scorch the sand up, you know, from being over the top of it. And it won't. But at the same time, there's still cool air in here, but it's not freezing. So it just works good. So that's what it is. It's a black ceramic heat bulb. Weird looking little thing. Like a pancake. And that's what um that's what we use works 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 better than a than a chick bulb to me because the chick bulb you have to put way away from the crabs or it, it will burn them up. That's what we found out. All right, I'm gonna sneak in here, guys. This is the next day, and look how happy is that for me coming in here on top of them. Look at them on the blocks. I uh, made them unhappy by disturbing them, of course. You see how the water's getting a little gray? 
Doesn't have much much time left. This be time to uh, time to swap out the water. But they are doing well. And I visually, as of this point, I don't even see one dead one. So I'm sure I didn't cover everything in the video. So this video is getting into 30 minutes or so. So let's do a couple of key takeaways right quick, just to uh, make sure you guys understand and you know are understanding what's what all's needed. I've been doing this, you know, forever 15 years, tending to crabs. You know, started out with just keeping a couple hundred. Now we keep, you know, two or three thousand. So we'll do some key do some key takeaways real quick. All right, guys and gals. So key takeaways. Um, I think I'm pretty happy with the, the dimensions that, that that Steve has built this for me you know, that I came up with. Um, the dimensions. Steve's a master carpenter. He he built the box. I, I I can't cut a straight edge with a skill saw, but I'm a fisherman. Steve is a, Steve's a master finished carpenter. But the box size turned out really well. Um, I probably wouldn't go any bigger now that I've seen them overnight and how they're acting. I've not lost a single crab um, that I can see on the surface. And most of them, when I walked in here, there was there was over a thousand up and out um, and and chilling on the surface of the sand. And uh, key takeaways: so box size. Uh, if you're gonna build one, if you got the room, go 60, 65 inches. You know, long, 20 high, 20 wide. Um, that'll give you 400 plus quarts of uh, of room. That'll let you put 200 pounds of sand, 250 pounds of sand possibly in that, um, as we've done here. And then uh, that'll let you keep a couple thousand fiddlers. You know, pretty easy. So you guys want to keep you know, fiddlers long term, so you can have them, you know, to four or five months for sheepshead or, or even all year. Some guys like to keep them all year. I, I don't personally, but I can. Like I said, I, and I've been keeping fiddlers for, I've been keeping 10 in the fiddlers for a long, long time because in the winter they're hard to come by. So my neighbor, um, he's very, very good at catching them. So they'll go when they'll go to certain flats uh, when the tide goes out and the sun's out. And they'll, um, they've got a method of getting five to 10,000 in about 10 minutes. So, um, I can't, can't rebuild that method. Uh, but it, it's more about finding the flats that are conducive for fiddler crabs to be there in the, in the weather conditions. So they like a lot of sunlight, not a lot of wind because their eyes are like on little antennas. So you don't like that when the wind blows on that. So usually light winds, Tides have gone out for an hour or two. Flats starting to dry out. They come out, especially when it's sunny. They want to come dry out and clean up and be ready to burrow back up for that night. So that's when you can get them. Um, but back to the container, we've talked about the dimensions. Uh, remember the fresh water source. They have to be able to breathe. They breathe with, you know, underneath their bottom of their shells, underneath their belly. Um, the gills are supposedly, you know, over, over close to their legs on each side is where they breathe. Um, that can get quite dirty, but what it can't get is, uh, is toxic, you know, ammonia, um, believe it or not, though you get ammonia out of these crabs after a while, you got to clean this, clean the sand up and you got to keep the water cleaned out as I mentioned, and that's toxic to them. And they know when it's bad, they won't just sit in it. They'll get out of it and go in the hunt on something clean. If they can't find it, they're going to die. So you got to make sure that water's cleaned out so they can get cleaned out and breathe. Otherwise they just basically suffocate and get poisoned. Um, not cool. Um, so I kind of feel responsible for them. You know, when I, when I'm, um, when I've got them, I, I want to take care of them. We've gone through a lot of trouble to, uh, to keep them, you know, and somebody's gone through a little bit of trouble to catch them. So we want to, want to keep them. We want to have them when we go fishing. So, um, what else? Oh, the, the floral foam blocks that can absorb that water. And as you saw in the video, we put the foam blocks in there after, after, you know, um, dousing them and sinking them in a five gallon bucket of brackish water. Um, you need, you need a few five gallon buckets of brackish water around the water. Won't, it won't go bad or anything. If it sits around the salt, won't go out of it. So we usually keep it, it we go through it though. Cause I like to, I like to really keep the crabs clean. So you kind of make it a hobby and tend to them four or five times a week, four times really is really all you got to do. Um, the diet again for them, grits, blood worms, 
I'll even throw a couple of French fries in there now and then. And, uh, cause they'll, they'll pretty much eat anything. You just don't want to get anything that's going to kill them. So, um, they'll, they'll, they'll really eat anything. I mean, a lot of people feed them, chop up a bunch of little hot dogs, throw them in there. Um, I just don't like to throw stuff in there. that's going to make them smell bad. Cause they, they already smell like crabs as it is. And the more organic you get the diet, the less smell there is. Like I said, I've been doing it for a long time and I see a lot of different ways to do things and a lot of ways not to do it. So, but anyhow, heat is needed uh, most of the year, especially, I mean, first of the year, because anyway, until you get into June or July, you're going to need to put heat on them at night. They like that. They don't like getting cold. So, and let's see what else. Little places to hide, little crab toys, like I showed you, little, little mouse rocks, you know, anything. The floral blocks work great for that, too. They can hide behind them. They, they think they can. And they, they dig under stuff. You can throw, you know, a styrofoam take-home container in there, clean it up, throw it in there, just flip it upside down. I mean, anything like that, cups, solo cups, anything, they'll get into. So um, I'd say that when they need heat, it's below 60 degrees, 65 degrees, they're going to need heat. Um, above that, they're fine without heat. They're going to need light every day, um, whether you give them, you know, UV source light or just a shot light. They, they just need light for part of the day as their natural you know, circadian rhythm has taken place their whole lives. Crabs only live a year, year and a half at the most anyway, fill the crabs in the wild environment. You can actually spend, spend done and I'm um, keeping them. They'll actually live up to three years or more in captivity if they're kept clean and kept, you know, kept right. So keep in mind, these guys don't live very long. It's just like, you know, shrimp, white shrimp out in the ocean here off Georgia and North Florida, uh, Northeast Florida. Um, they only live about a year. So, that's why they really never run out because they've done their breeding. They're protected inside when they do their breeding. And the shrimpers can only strip off the beaches and in the ocean. So by the time they get to those points, they're at the end of their life cycle. So they, they don't live very long. You know, crabs are right along with that. They just feel the crabs are. They don't live very long. So anyway, if there's no telling how old some of these crabs are, the bigger ones are probably older dudes, you know, with big pinchers. Those are the big males. Anyhow, if you got any questions, just leave it in the comments. And um, this is we, there's another fiddler crab farm video that I did five or six years ago. It's also on this channel if you want to look at it. Relatively the same stuff, just uh, we just got a little more advanced techniques now. And of course, building a bigger you know bigger area for them to be in at one time. But other than that, you guys take care, and we'll see you next time. Peace out.